Episode three. Let's chuck all the lore that we had that was left remaining. Let's flush that down the toilet. Where do I begin? We have a ridiculous scene, which I never thought I'd be seeing. And it sounds so bad me saying this. We have Shelob versus a seal door now she lobs meant to be fully grown at this point and she has nothing to do with this storyline nothing whatsoever we see a seal door go into her lair she has a load of eggs that start to hatch and then they start to attack a seal door and somehow a seal door gets into a fight with an orc and then he fights a spider that's small in comparison to a fully grown shelob in the return of the king now when i saw this in the trailer i thought oh okay he's i don't know somehow wandered towards mirkwood he's gone off into the woods and he's fighting spiders now that's what i thought of but that spider that he fights in this show that is confirmed as shelob a small runtish looking spider that bearing in mind, right, a sealed door struggled to fight this spider at this size. And you look at what Sam did. He took on a fully formed, big, badass Shelob and won that fight. And a sealed door, fully grown man, couldn't handle a little Shelob. Awful. Where have they plucked that from? It's just more member berries. It's like, oh, do you remember Shelob? Let's put her in the show for some reason. And she doesn't have a terrifying presence she just looks gangly and the seal door gets away i think he even gets a shot at her then he runs off we have for some reason an orc who is now a family man now we have seen father and son orcs before we have azog and bulk but they don't state how they have the children i don't think it is through sexual means but in the new rings of power we have a daddy orc we have a mummy orc and we have a baby orc. It's like the fucking three bears. And this orc, much like Vin Diesel, has got family. And he's telling Adar that he doesn't want war. He doesn't want to fight because these orcs can live freely and he wants a, a lovely life for his orc child. As if no one's going to attack them. These are meant to be the most evilest beings. It's Malkor's corrupted vision of elves and now we've got a daddy orc who's trying to be soft yeah the concept is interesting and it could work but the way that they're doing it is so clunky we don't know anything about this orc and it looks like it's probably going to be a big player in the in the show because why the hell would you introduce it not to bring it back up again i wouldn't be surprised if this orc teams up with gladual it would be so stupid again amazon have gone what can we do that we've not seen before and so we have a kid orc in a family is that a female orc i don't know just imagining daddy orc putting on some barry white and going to town on that other orc just imagine that why isn't there any other orc children running about we don't see that we only see one there should be more if they're all at it. We have a Numenor, Stevie Wonders wandering about. In season one, she made a big, big issue of not being seen as looking blind. You know, she says it to her Lendil like they have to pretend because they won't follow her. In this one, she's got her jazz hands out, reaching for everything. And what the hell is that about? No discretion. It's comical. She literally reaches out and she's wandering her hand through thin air whilst everyone's looking at her at the funeral scene. She wanders in again, hands going everywhere. Insults are being chucked at her and she gets slapped across the face. Her bodyguards do nothing. They're not standing in front of her. They can see this woman's being aggressive, but no, they don't try to protect her. She gets hit. She plays it off as being the good character, you know, and she gives her a hug and then the woman steps down. She steps away. All is forgiven from her. But it shouldn't be because she caused an absolute disaster. She led to so many Numenorean lives being lost. And for what? And rightly so, Arf Arizon is looking angry. He was okay in this episode, to be honest. He's been portrayed better than he was last season. But there is one scene where he's in that I really think was really poor. There's a scene where Arf Arizon, his son, Isildur's sister, who even after they've named her in the episode, I couldn't tell you her name. Ararian? Fucking, I don't know. But they're talking treason. 
openly. Everyone's talking treason openly nowadays. And a sealed door sister wants to join up. She wants to recruit more people into a cult. She's going to be the reason why the cult starts. We see a sealed door's mate who became captain by cutting Galadriel's cloth, didn't need any other credentials, just needed to cut her cloth. He goes up to them, has a go at them. Kermit or Kemin, whatever Arf Arison's son is called, the least intimidating figure in the whole show, just stands up, tries to intimidate. By the way, he's a terrorist because he blew up half of the new Minorian ships last season and there was no investigation, nothing got away with it, Isildur helped him, did not report him, he backs down because Isildur's friend threatens him with violence and also says that Muriel is great, she helped to save many people back in Middle Earth when the volcano erupted, she should have been toast but I guess the writers were blinded by that and so it's setting up the discontent within Numenor. The Numenorean scenes, although they have been clunky, they're probably so far they've been the more interesting scenes seeing the dynamic between the Numenorians, the faithful but we have a really awful scene at the end where Muriel is wearing the white dress the whole court is erupting they don't want her they don't want her to be in power they're blaming her and then a sealed door sister rocks up with a palantir she's been using it she's been in the king's chambers and she's had control of the palantir now she sees a vision and she's explaining why they should follow our Farazon and ignore Muriel. We've had nothing on Isildur's sister apart from she's an apprentice I think and now she's leading the rebellion. She chucks the palantir. Elendil goes to pick it up then he just rockets across the room like Pippin got full control of this palantir. He can't handle it. He shoots across the room and then for some reason a random eagle just decides you know what I'm gonna rock up flies over. He lands by the window. The eagle has chosen off Arizon and that's why he should rule. There should be more manipulating from his side rather than just talking openly about treason. They can't handle scenes that have manipulation. We saw Calabrimbor and Halbrand in the last episode. There's no subtlety to just say everything out in the open. It's just so poor. We have more scenes of Calabrimbor and Halbrand there with Durin and Deesa. Durin just randomly suspects Anatar. Anatar, instead of subtly trying to win him over, is trying to rush everything. Deesa is on board with the plan she wants the rings and Halbrand does some more manipulation with Calabrimbor the bromance is real the bromance is brilliant the bromance is shite the sealed door on his adventures just randomly gets stabbed and then all of a sudden no blood loss for ages he doesn't get healed up He's all good. The pain and all that is done. And that is going to be Isildur's wife in the show, if you didn't know. Arendir's going full John Wick. So Bronwyn didn't survive season one because the actress didn't want to play the character again. And so we saw in season one that she was fully healed. She was safe. Now they had to wreck on that and he failed. And so he's beating himself up and she has this great big funeral arrangement. Has she earned it? No. She's the one who decided to defend her people. Instead of going to a watchtower where you have the high ground, she decides to go into an open village. Theo's back, the character we all wanted to see. He doesn't like Arendir. He really doesn't, but he loves the sealed door, apparently, and helps the sealed door to go and find his horse after it got taken away. And then we get more law breaking because what the heck why not chuck the fucking spanner in the works they get attacked at a camp whilst trying to get his horse back and then ents appear to save them if you're after a show that respects well-established characters and the law then you're watching the wrong show it is just awful the writing is awful the acting is poor the directing's poor and we still have five more episodes to go oh dear